so truth out. Uh, this is a, a, a story about social distancing uh, in prisons because because that's an area uh, that that we do need social distancing from because uh, prisons are completely overcrowded. We have a prison industrial complex that likes to make money off of prisons, and uh, uh, I talk about this in my in, in my new album that I'm that I'm going to be putting out later. Uh, shameless plug, uh, but I, I do talk about the prison industrial complex and um, a lot of what it is. But they're overcrowded. Uh, there are for-profit prisons in this country. We have the largest population uh, of prisoners in the world, which is fucking insanity uh, as to as to why it would be okay. Uh, and at this point, at this point, we are. I think I would like to say that we're actively running out of things to make illegal, right? Like fucking jaywalking is illegal. Like that's really that's. You know, uh, like we're putting people in prison for nonviolent offenses. Like we've criminalized protests against like things. <laughs> States all across the country, like a month and a half ago, were ramping it up. Uh, this is, I mean, the the criminalizing protest thing has been going on since 2017. Uh, but that, like, they just ramped it up where they were like, if you if you say you don't like pipelines, and you make a sign, and you come up with chants and songs. Um, we're going to fine you $250,000 and put you in prison for six years because we're Louisiana and we think pipelines are people. Like that's that's the way that uh, some of these laws are operating. So so people are going to prison for these crazy laws where, you know, um, and uh, when all this stuff started happening with uh, with uh, I'm, I don't think I can say what the what it's actually called because there's a bunch of censorship going on right now. Uh, so I have to I have to come up with the with the different things to so this really bad situation that we're in. Um, Forty seven state prisons, ICE detention centers, they all canceled visitations. They canceled visitations uh, as a way to prevent the spread of this this pandemic that we're in. Um, I hope I can say pandemic without social media being like, it's over. He's, it's all fake news, you know. Um, 47 state prisons and ICE detention centers took away uh, visitations, which is like these, this is, this is what people wait for. You know, when you're in prison for that long, um, most of them for nonviolent drug offenses and stuff like that is like, this is like people wait for this. And not only that, there's tons of cases where, like they'll be tried in Kansas, but they'll put it be put into prison in California. So in order for people to go visit, they have to make this huge uh, journey in order to see them. So uh, they had to they had to cancel the visit. But now here's the problem: is that uh, this thing can still spread in prisons because of the guards and the the prison workers and just the state of the prisons themselves, right? Um, I, I'm I, I'm pretty sure when you think of prisons you don't think of sterile environments like that's you know like like when i say prison industrial complex everybody isn't like oh yes lysol an overwhelming amount of lysol like that's not something people associate prisons with um and prisoners are more likely to get sick uh they they are immunocompromised because um well, they're in a hyper stressful situation. You know, if our prison systems were more about rehabilitation and responsibility, perhaps they wouldn't be. Um, but they, but most prisons are 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 violent. Uh, the guards are violent. Uh, they're they're not in sanitary conditions. You know, like when when you have an open toilet three feet from where you're supposed to like lay in bed and chill out. I feel like that's not, uh, a, you know, like a a calm and soothing environment. Um, I, and, uh, from, from my understanding, um, uh, from, from things that I've read, uh, as well as, uh, cinemas uh, is, uh, is that uh, no one is doing yoga, uh, and listening to like, uh, you know, uh, ambient noise of waterfalls. That's, that's not what they, uh, have in prison. Uh, that's not like played over the prison radio is just sort of the ambient sound of, uh, maybe some, maybe, maybe the, a, a nice rain or something like there's nothing soothing <laughs> about it. Uh, so that, you know, when, and when you're in a high, higher state of stress, it's easier for you to, 
to get sick. So they, you know, prisoners are immunocompromised. The guards are coming in from the outside. We're not testing. We don't know who they've had contact with. Um, and I think in New York, uh, the, the article stated that in New York, there were actually cases where, where guards got sick. They tested positive. Uh, some of them died. Uh, so, you know, and they were like, but we only had minimal contact with like a couple of the prisoners who then had contact with fucking everybody uh, because, you know, th we have an over overpopulated prison system. So uh, and you, prisons make it virtually impossible to, uh, you know, practice the CDC uh, washing hand washing regulations, the CDC uh, clean re cleaner regulations. They can't have hand sanitizer because hand sanitizers have alcohol in them. Um, so they are, they are restricted from having hand sanitizer in prisons. Uh, and most of these areas were not sterilized. You can't, I don't think you, like, that's, I don't know how they would achieve something like that. Um, not only that, but a lot of the prisoners that people, that reporters have gotten a chance to talk to ha have said that the correction officers are also always sick. They're sneezing and coughing. Um, all the time, probably because corrections officers are also immunocompromised, right? They're also having a hard time keeping their immune system up because they have a super fucking stressful job too. Uh, because uh, you know they gotta assault all these prisoners. It's very stressful. You gotta pick and choose. You gotta make a list. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. Uh, healthcare in prisons. Well, healthcare outside prisons isn't particularly awesome uh, in America either. But uh, um, the healthcare in prisons is uh, is believe it or not, this might come as a very sh uh, surprising statement. Um, is uh, uh, it's not great in prisons, you guys? Some of you guys might be shocked out there, but it is not great. <laughs> it's super not great. Uh, so. What they're saying is if you get sick, if you're showing symptoms, they'll just give you Tylenol. That's their healthcare plan to take care of the situation. It's really, really bad situation. Um, so one of the things that taking away these visitations has done, uh, guys, it's hard enough for us to like not have physical interaction, right? Um, to not see each other face to face, to not, uh, um, you know, uh, hug each other, give ourselves, Hey, I'm a, I'm, I'm a huggy guy. I think every, if you, if you've hung out with me, you know, I'm, I'm a hugger, you know, uh, it's, that's been really difficult is, is, uh, I've been, I've been hugging, hugging Spider-Man a lot. Uh, that's, that's what I, that's what I've been doing is, is hugging old Spidey back there. Uh, that's been my, uh, physical interaction, but, uh, they're, they're not really getting any of that sort of stuff in, in prisons right now. Um, and taking that away, like that's really, really fucking difficult. And that's going to put them in probably a worse mental state, uh, than they already are in, um, phone calls and, and video streaming services, they cost money in prison and prisoners barely make any money as it is. Uh, America's prison system is basically prison slavery. Um, and so right now there's been a big call, uh, big, big push for, uh, free phone calls, free video, video, uh, calls, uh, for, uh, prisoners so that they can at least keep in communication with their family. Uh, Iana Presley, Massachusetts said that this was specifically meant to maintain family bonds. Uh, I don't know a whole lot about Iana Presley, but, uh, this seems like a nice thing, uh, to do for people, but what they're actually offering, what these prison, uh, prisons are actually offering is, uh, they're like, well, we'll reduce the rates. We'll just bring the rates uh, down, we'll, you know, we'll bring the prices down of the, uh, <laughs> of the, of the, of the calls and stuff. That'll be good. Right. That's probably fine. Uh, which is like, this is no different than how they're treating the, the American working class and poor people in this country. Right. Like they're like, we're, we're talking about Bernie Sanders is talking about $2,000. Uh, Tulsi Gabbard, Andrew Yang were, was pushing a, 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 another UB emergency UBI plan. Um, and you know, uh, you got a couple of these politicians coming out and being like, we'll give you loans when you're not making any money. And then you can pay us back when you've not made any money. Uh, you, you know, and it's like, that's not what we need. You made up money for Wall Street. You literally made up money for Wall Street. 
and the, and the airline industry who's not giving it any refunds, right? And it's like, it's the same way that they deal with it where they're like, we can't just help people. What we'll do is we'll decrease how much money you're going to give us. And then you guys can cover the difference uh, when, when this is over and we don't know when it's going to be over. Cool. Yeah. And we're like, fucking no. <laughs> it's a bad idea. So uh, here's a way that Iran tried to deal with it. Um, Iran released 85,000 of its prisoners. And, uh, uh, you know, because they were in a, a similar conditions where it's not going to be good for them. It's not going to be good for them. So uh, they released 85,000 prisoners temporarily. I think once this situation is over, they have to go back to serve their, their, their sentence. Um, but I think we can do that in, in America. And it's very simple. And, and I think this is a very good plan. Uh, if somebody knows how to write legislation uh, and would like to translate this into legislative terms, please feel free to do it. Uh, but here's my plan. I think what we need to do is we release these prisoners and then put them into uh, all of the empty hotels across this country, particularly, particularly the Trump hotels. Uh, hotels are more sterilized in prisons, maybe not the Trump ones, but usually they're more sterilized than prison. I've got, I've walked into, um, you know, uh, putting, walked into fucking hotel rooms where it, it's, I feel like I'm just walking into bleach, uh, you know, just like the air is, uh, you know, so that's very sanitary. I think when my eyes are burning, uh, because I set foot inside of a, 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 a quality in that's, I mean, that's a very sterile, uh, environment. Uh, I think that's what we need to do. We just fucking, and then you can have guards and shit stay, you know, standing outside and you know, we'll have hand washing statements to the stations and you wash your hands and you go in and, you know, you talk to the prisoners and, and that, and that's a way that, that the hotel industry can uh, you know have have its employees taken care of? Considering you have uh, assholes like Richard Burr and Diane Feinstein who cashed out, who they they sold their stocks in these industries right before this crash happened. I talked about that yesterday. Uh, you know, and and like they, so this way the hotel industry is taken care of because the prison industrial complex uh, can take all the money uh, that they make, uh, uh, you know, from prisoners and and pay hotel staff that'll be fun that'll be a fun thing to do i think this is a genius idea hey everybody thank you for watching this video uh if you enjoyed it uh please hit the like button please share it um please make sure that you are subscribed to the channel uh, i'm gonna be posting videos uh pretty much every day and the video that you just watched is from uh, a live video that I did on Facebook and I will be doing them every single Sunday. So uh, if you're not following me on Facebook, uh, please do so and then you can join in on the on the conversations that we'll be having uh, live on Facebook. But uh, in the meantime, uh, this this would be when I'll be telling you about some live stand updates, but right now I don't uh, have any of those and I'm not sure when we'll be resuming live events. So um, hit the like button, share it. And uh, if you uh, if you do have the means to, if you are able to, um, you can uh, you can donate at ramennoodlescomedy.com slash donate. You can become a sustaining member or just make a one-time donation, uh, whatever whatever works for you. And if you can't, no problem. There will be tons of content out uh, for free because I think we all need it. We all need to be good to each other right now, so stay well.